Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Sunday, March 17, 2024. I hope we are in good spirit this morning. I pray that the Lord will continue to be with you and may he give you peace. Our reading this morning comes to us from Revelation chapter 2, reading verses 1 to 7. And it says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus writes, These things say he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlestick. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou cantest not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patient, and for many names sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art falling, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest, the deeds of the Nicolodians, which I also eat. Seven last. He that had an hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Amen. We give God thanks this morning for the reading. So this is the first church of the prophetic period. The church called Ephesus, whose name means desirable. So according to my reading, geographically, the city was in one of the most desirable location and had the finest arbors in Western Asia that rival Alexandria and Syria, Antioch. So it was a very commercialized city. And it was also a gateway to Asia, you know, where people would travel through to, to do trade or go to, to do trade. Now, this church, it was very active in evangelism. So they were hard workers, but unfortunately, some of them had left their first love. But in general, it was a spiritually warm church. And this church period, it was from... AD 33 to AD 100. And you might be asking, what does AD mean? Well, it means Anno Domini, which also means after Christ's death. So this was the period of the apostle or the apostolic age, the church in the first century, right? And as I said earlier, they were very active in evangelism. So they were a church on fire for God. The church it loved evangelism and the members they were zealous and they were dependable and they were creative in developing ministry for the church growth but unfortunately after a while many of them who were very hot became cold or as the reading states they lost their first love sounds familiar so what are some of the the, the characteristics that are used to identify this church. Let us go through them. So they were patient, right? And they were light bearers, as I stated earlier. So they stand against evil. So this period of the church history, it was desirable because these early Christian, the doctrine that they give, it was in its most pure form purity if you want to put it that way and because of that they enjoy the benefits and the blessing of the holy spirit gifts they were also commended for their patient and the fact that they ate evil so they were very zealous about testing falsehood about testing false apostle use the bible as a testing measure 
to know whether or not somebody is telling the truth rather than listening to the person and not checking the facts in the Bible. So they were that kind of people. But because of the purity of the church and the purity of the gospel and because of their zealousness and their perseverance, they were under great persecution. But even in the midst of that, they remained steadfast in their faith. It also stated that they hated the Nicolaitans that Christ also hated. Who was the Nicolaitans, you may ask? These were folks, liberists and modernists, who believed that the church was too strict. Its standards they were advising to compromise. So they believe there was too much rules in the church. There's, the church was too strict. And do we have that today? There are many people who believe that church is too rigid. It is too strict. And because of that, you find that a lot of churches are very liberal today. They condone a lot of things that the Bible does not support. So they are trying to please the people rather than pleasing God. And so they will allow certain things to slide under the rug so to speak no that is not right so in a lot of these institutions or these churches you can do almost anything you want to do as long as you come and confess it later so people want to drink as often as they want to drink they want to go to parties as often as they want to go to parties and they want to wear anything they want to wear and do just about almost anything they want to do because the bible says that you should come as you are and all of that but the church has rules god has rules and life has rules so you can't do just about anything as you please because you are free to do so there must be some order there must be some conduct of oneself and reverence that is given to God. I mean, we are coming into the presence of God. So because God invites you to come as you are, you're going to come and show in disrespect because you are hoping to come. There has to be rules. So people have a problem with the rules that the churches have or ultimately God has. And so they stay away from church or they will not accept any invitation to come to church and they will find all kind of excuses and all kind of fault not to go to church because what it interrupts their lives and their flow of things so they stay away from god or they will tell you well i have god in my heart already well i am already serving him already but you're not doing what he says you're just doing what you want to do but that's a story for another time i'm not here to judge anybody but i'm just telling you what the word of god says Listen, this is how I would advise you. If the rules that the church has are in line with biblical principles, by all means follow them. But if they are not, then you know what your answer is. But the church has rules. There must be rules. There must be order. God is not a God of this organization. I can't comply with all of these rules that the church has. and But they are not the church rules. They are guidelines that are given by the Bible. So, if you have a problem with them, it means therefore that you have a problem with God. Because they are God's word, not the church. The church is only following what God instructed us to follow. Right? So, these are the Nicolaitans, the liberists and the modernists. So they use liberty as an excuse to practice immorality. So I am free to do what I want to do. So they, they, they love to talk about liberty and freedom, but not in the context of actually doing what is right, but doing what they want to do. And because of that, liberty, morality is promoted. Do you understand? And among these things, you have stuff like polygamy. You have the heating of food offered to idols and all kind of things that was just abominable before God. So it was a crazy time. It, you know, the Bible talk about the mystery of iniquity. And we don't have to look very far and very hard to see a lot of similarities between us and Ephesus. It's a crazy time we are living in. So they lost their first love. 
the Lord said, look here, man, I have some concern and I have a charge against you because you have left your first love. You have forgotten your identity. You change. And he said that they needed to come back to him before it was too late. Because if they don't come back, then what, what he's going to do? He's going to remove their candlestick. So a serious message is given to them. And the same goes for us today. We can't be playing around with our soul salvation. And many of us, the truth is that we have lost our first love. And if we don't return, in fact, the invitation is given to us. The warning is given to us. The compelling call of the Holy Spirit is being given to us. Come back to God. Come back to your first love. Because if you don't return, then what? You won't be able to experience paradise. So for many of us who says that we want to go to heaven, our life need to be in order. We need to do what God asks us to do. We need to return to our pure state. We need to give God our heart again. We need a rebaptism of the Holy Spirit. It can't be business as usual. And so if we don't want the Lord to remove our candlestick and so that we are left in utter darkness, then may we accept this invitation. Amen. So I pray this morning that as we think about this situation and as we think about the church of Ephesus and think about all that they went through the good and the bad and their experiences may we use it as a lesson to help us walk continuously in the light of God may God continue to bless us and may God continue to keep us faithful as we do and seek his face amen have a wonderful day